this will begin the lecture notes for section two of chapter six and section two deals with transferring thermal energy conduction thermal energy is transferred from place to place by conduction convection and radiation conduction is the transfer of thermal energy by collisions between particles and matter and uh, an easy way to remember conduction is you know when you were a baby or you've seen a baby and mama says don't touch don't touch the hot stove that's conduction conduction occurs because particles and matter are in constant motion thermal energy is transferred when one end of a metal spoon is heated by a Bunsen burner the kinetic energy of the particles near the flame increases kinetic energy is transferred when these particles collide with neighboring particles as these collisions continue thermal energy is transferred from one end of the spoon to the other end of the spoon when heat is transferred by conduction thermal energy is transferred from place to place without transferring matter thermal energy is transferred by the collisions between particles not by movement of matter heat conductors the rate at which heat moves depends on the material heat moves faster by conduction in solids and liquids than in gases in gases particles are farther apart so collisions with other particles occur less frequently than they do in solids or liquids best conductors of heat are metals in a piece of metal there are electrons that are not bound to individual atoms but can move easily through the metal collisions between these electrons and other particles in the metal enable thermal energy to be transferred more quickly than in other material convection convection occurs if you look around your room as you're listening to these lecture notes and you see like uh, if you have something hanging from the ceiling if a fans going and it's moving that's convection liquids and gases can flow and are classified as fluids one of the things that people forget is that gases are also fluids because they flow if you blow on a piece of uh, paper or tissue and it moves you set up a convection current it's moving it flows in fluids thermal energy can be transferred by convection convection is the transfer of thermal energy in a fluid by the movement of warmer and cooler fluid from place to place winds are a convection current that changing from warm to cold sets up those convection the convection currents and sets up a wind when conduction occurs more energetic particles collide with less energetic particles and transfer thermal energy when convection occurs more energetic particles move from one place to another as the particles move faster they tend to be farther apart as a result a fluid expands as the temperature increases and again you saw this in first semester when we did hot air balloons that as hot air expands or as hot air is put into that balloon it expands to fill that space as the temperature increases we increase the heat that we put in that fluid expands when a fluid expands its volume increases but its mass doesn't change as a result its density decreases the same is true for parts of a fluid that have been heated explains this is based on this is why a hot air balloon floats as the fl fluid expands it fills up that balloon and the density decreases so it's able to float density of the warmer fluid therefore is less than that of the surrounding cooler fluid it allows that balloon to float heat transfers by currents convection currents transfer heat from warmer to cooler parts of the fluid remember warm goes to cool 
hot goes to cold. In a convection current, both conduction and convection transfer thermal energy. Earth's atmosphere is made of various gases and is a fluid. Atmosphere is warmer at the equator than it is at the north and south poles. Temperature differences create convection currents that carry heat to cooler regions. Radiation. Almost no matter exists in the space between Earth and the Sun. So heat cannot be transferred by conduction or convection. Instead, the Sun's heat reaches Earth by radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. See if this movie will play. Oops. And apparently not. But anyway, what it was going to show you is that radiation, if we were to get the fire going here, well, we can get the fire going here. We'll, uh, we'll change it. Where's my colors? There we go. We'll get some heat going here off of this stove. And if you were to hold your, well, we'll hold my hand up here. And you notice that as that your hand feels warmer, that is because that fire is radiating electromagnetic waves. It's radiating that heat. These waves can travel through space even when no matter is present. Energy that is transferred by radiation often is called radiant energy. When radiation strikes a material, some of the energy is absorbed, some is reflected, and some may be transmitted through the material. The amount of energy absorbed, reflected, and transmitted depends on the type of material. Materials that are light colored reflect more radiant energy while dark colored materials absorb more radiant energy. When radiant energy is absorbed by a material, the thermal energy of the material increases. Radiation in solids, liquids, and gases. The transfer of energy by radiation is most important in gases. In a solid, liquid, or gas, Radiant energy can travel through space between molecules. Molecules can absorb this radiation and emit some of the energy they absorb. This energy then travels through the space between molecules and is absorbed and emitted by other molecules. Because molecules are much faster, farther apart in gases than in solids or liquids, radiation usually passes more easily through gases than through solids or liquids. Almost all living things have special features that help them control the flow of heat. For example, the Antarctic fur seal's thick coat helps keep it from losing heat. This helps them survive in a climate in which the temperature is often below freezing. In the desert, the scaly skin of the desert spiny lizard has just the opposite effect. It reflects the sun rays and keeps the animal from becoming too hot. Insulators. A material in which heat flows slowly is an insulator. Examples of materials that are insulators are wood, some plastics, fiberglass, and air. Materials such as metals that are good conductors of heat are poor insulators. Gases, such as air, are usually much better insulators than solids or liquids. Some types of insulators contain many pockets of trapped air. If you've ever worn a pair of, like, long underwear, it has little pockets built into it to trap that air. These air pockets conduct heat poorly and also keep convection currents from forming. Insulating buildings. Building insulation is usually made of some fluffy material, such as fiberglass that contains pockets of trapped air. The insulation is packed into a building's outer walls and attic, where it reduces the flow of heat between the building and the surrounding air. 
A thermos bottle reduces the flow of heat into and out of the liquid in the bottle so that the temperature of the liquid hardly changes over a number of hours. To do this, a, thermal bo a thermos bottle has two glass walls. A good one does. The air between the two walls is removed, so there is a vacuum between the glass layers. Because the vacuum contains almost no matter, it prevents heat transfer by conduction or radiation between the liquid and the air outside the thermos. To further reduce the flow of heat into or out of the liquid, the inside and outside glass surface of a thermos bottle is coated with aluminum to make each surface highly reflective. This causes electromagnetic waves to be ref reflected at each surface. So to demonstrate, your liquid inside, the inside is, is painted with that reflective aluminum color so that when it bounces walls, it's going to bounce back. Okay. Same thing with uh, air, air or radiation outside because the inner surface is also painted that it reflects back, or excuse me, the air inside is reflected back out. Yeah. Reducing heat flow in a thermos. The inner reflective surface prevents radiation from transferring heat out of the liquid, as I indicated earlier. Because the surface here is reflective, the material bounces back. It, it can't penetrate that. It's reflected back in. The outer reflective surface prevents radiation from transferring heat into the liquid. The outer surface is kind of hard to see here, but this surface keeps it, of this thermos, keeps heat from penetrating and it's reflected back out of the thermos. This concludes the lecture notes for section two. And again, after reviewing the lecture notes, go to your My Big Campus account and complete the online review questions. We'll go through these questions at the end of the section. Section or question one: Describe the difference between conduction and convection. And a quick and easy answer: Conduction is I always referred to. Baby, don't touch the hot stove. Conduction occurs by actually touching. The, the hot object or the heat source. In convection, the more energetic particles move from one place to another. Question two, blank is a transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. That would be radiation. Transfer of elect energy by electromagnetic waves is radiation. Radiation is how the earth gets the heat from the sun. There is no conduction or convection in outer space, be the space between the earth and the sun, because there's nothing to conduct or convey that energy. The only way it gets to us is through electromagnetic waves via radiation. Question three, which of the following is the least effective insulator? That would be metal. Metal is the best conductor. Conductors make poor insulators. That concludes the lecture notes for section two of chapter six.